And, okay, but then he closes this on this weird out-of-nowhere conclusion. And he's like, and think about it. If we could just all agree that the world was flat, we would learn to treat each other better than we treat ourselves. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you lost me, Mark. <laughs> How'd you get there, but Take me we're there, do- Mark. We're doing spheres and hate, motherfuckers. <laughs> spheres and hate. Yeah, or at the very least, cubes and indifference. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because where there's God, there's awful. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left, or at least that's what the man wants you to think, is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, uh, you know when movies start really getting good? Wait, when is that? After part seven. <laughs> they, really, <laughs> they really hit their stride around part it's like eight on Mark average, Sargent and the fucking MCU. Same basic thing. Return yeah. of the uh, Jedi the and that- Mark Sargent. They get it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast. You just heard him, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. That's my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. It turns out that God was the killer the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah, the, was, the call was coming from inside the dome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everybody's going to talk before I introduce them. That's fine. That's fine. So joining us once again this week is author, podcaster, activist, skeptic, etc. Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back, sir. Hey, no, hey, everyone. Thanks for having me back on. Always a pleasure to join you guys and uh, a pleasure to, you know, pick up what we started last time and really, really drive this one home. <laughs> yeah, I felt like we hadn't spent <laughs> enough time exploring this theory, really. I'll need some more clues. <laughs> <Okay. Yes. laughs> I feel like the host of Blues Clues at this point. We should have figured it out by now. All right. So tell us, Heath, let's make it official. What will we be breaking down today? We watched Ibid. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not giving this flat earth nonsense another intro. Uh, last week we did flat earth clues segments one through seven. And this week we did segments eight through 14. It's the story of Ibid. <laughs> Go. <laughs> no, that's fair. All right. So, Eli, how bad was this half of the movie? Well, if you weren't convinced by not looking at flight aware and you still have six more clues to put in your movie, you will fuck you, Bill Nye Science Guy. (laughs) Oh, you thought there wasn't going to be a fuck you, Bill Nye the Science Guy portion of this movie? That's on you, listener. That's on you. Yeah, Yeah, and there's seven more clues. (laughs) Yeah, no. It's like making cuts in it. Don't worry about it. (laughs) So, okay, so so last week, of course, we tackled the first half of this thing. So if you just, you know, if you just listen to the occasional episode, if you jump in and out, you're doing it wrong. You're fucking it up for all of us. Go back, listen to last week's episode, and you'd know Noah's what the hell was going quoting. on. Oh, yes. for a second, Noah's actually quoting from the movie. <laughs> I was, wasn't I? All right, so let's start at the end here. Uh, did you guys find this week's clues more or less convincing than last week's? Ibid. <laughs> See, Reject the premise. I'm going to go with less, and that's impressive to me. If you had told me right. at the end of last week, oh, just wait until you get to the worst clues, I'd have been like, really? And they still <laughs> exist? <laughs> yeah, the arguments somehow managed to get worse. <laughs> or like, or, or less existent, right? Yeah, like, they, they get less co- coherent as an argument, but they also just seem to have way less kind of uh, impact. Like, uh, the, this whole thing builds towards a conclusion in, in the, the worst way that I've ever seen anything built. It just sort of peters out to a point where the last couple of clues, you're like, what are you even saying now, Mark? <laughs> yeah. You give up. Twelve's a good number. There were 12 disciples. <laughs> you my God. You could have stayed at 12. <laughs> you didn't have to get to 14, mate. We could have made the last episode even shorter if you did on 12. <laughs> yeah. It feels like he was under contract for 14 clues, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just want to reemphasize, we're saying it's less coherent than what we described last week. Yeah. It mm-hmm. became, it's impressive, <sighs> just vertically speaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say best worst YouTube comments. Oh, that's a huge one. And it's <laughs> fantastic. I'm going to read two of my favorites. First, from Susan, we got the following. Quote, your story is fiction. It is not in my Bible. I'll give you creativity, but to suggest that God is using some kind of computer projecting into our world is blasphemous. <laughs> That's why this so is wrong. He's getting yelled at from both sides, including whatever that side is or, you know, edge or curve. I don't know. Yeah. Right. From that area. Who, who knows the geometry on these things? Yeah. And <laughs> from Ruben, quote, if God existed, I imagine he'd be pretty upset at these videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a thumbs up for uh, Ruben from me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go best worst ordering because uh, as you already <laughs> alluded to, if you have 14 things and you really want to leave people with a, a grand impression of your overall amazing <laughs> genius theory that really blows apart, blows the lid off this whole dome, this whole kind of globe idea, you don't put the shittest ones at the end. Because <laughs> it really right. And there's everything. Oh, and also, by the way, fuck Bill Nye. His, his fuck Bill Nye. He's saying fuck Bill Nye. It just got nothing to do with it. We'll get there, but it's that's not how you order things. <laughs> Engineering? What science is that, asshole? Bullshit. <laughs> you can get a, B, a Bachelor of, of, uh, of Arts in it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I was going to go a couple videos earlier. I was going to back it up to where probably he should have ended it. I was going to go with the best worst, therefore. Mm. And, a certain, and I, I don't want to spoil this, but at a certain point, he explains to us wh how the world might benefit if we all understood how flat it was. And it's insane. <laughs> like, even by Mark Sargent standards, it's insane. Oh, yeah, there's got to be like a squiggly under the word therefore in his script. If he wrote that somewhere. Just like, no, 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 grammar check or whatever, logic check. No, nope. do not. You're not using that correctly. And I was going to go with best worst filmmaker gratitude. Now, we've had a couple of people who make our movies reach out to thank <laughs> us. But if you look at the posting of the first episode in the Flat Earth Clues on YouTube, the last and saddest comment is just Mark Sargent being like, thank you. Thank you for letting people know about my movie. I am <laughs> not turning into a corn cob. These are <laughs> genital warts. Worse. Worse. <laughs> you can't see me. I like them. I like them. <laughs> it's great. Makes, makes him feel <laughs> lumpy. All right, well, if I'm going to twist my brain into flat earth or arguments again, it's going to need a minute to stretch. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll dig into all the platitudinous bullshit that is flat earth clues 8 through 14. Lou, 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 doing God stuff. God stuff is my favorite stuff. Lou, Lou, Lou. Um, Mr. God? Uh, Sarah, Sarah, what's shaking? Yeah, uh, this is Michael Marshall. He's from uh, Purgatory. New Castle. New Castle. Like I said, purgatory. Uh, yep. Marshall, I'm not going to remember that. I'm going to call you Skinny Mike. Ha! <laughs> Love it. Skinny Mike. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So, right. It, there he is. It's about that Skinny giant Mike. dome. The, the giant dome that you created around the whole world. You want a piece of this pot pie, Skinny Mike? Yeah, the the, the world. It, I mean, it appears that the humans, they've... Um, because I will wring you out like a wet towel that yeah they've they've discovered the edge mm. um what what are we going to do what do you want us to do about that wow my creations mm. have finally discovered the truth Twist. at least they know my glory so tell me skinny mike who are these brilliant truth tellers that will finally bring religion to the unbelieving well so it, it's mostly mentally ill people and white supremacists so my crossover is it, it's a hundred percent yeah yeah the wet towel is full of cum. I got that, yeah. Just wringing it out. Uh. <laughs> Twist it. Twist. Hi there, listener. As you may be aware, we've kindly donated our time to QED not once, but twice. You invited yourselves last year. Including my magical talents. You forgot the name of the editor of the Skeptic magazine on stage at our gala. 
But sadly, QED is never happening again. It, it very much is happening again. We, we've just, we've taken a break is all. Which is why it's more important than ever that you attend the 10-year anniversary celebration of the Merseyside Skeptic Society, the fantastic organization that brings you QED, be reasonable, and occasionally incredulous. Oh, yeah. I, right now, it's roughly on par with your blog. How like. dare you? So if you're in the area, or if you can manage it, head over to mssx.co.uk for details. Help celebrate 10 amazing years of fantastic skepticism. That's mssx.co.uk. Please, please don't invite yourselves again. No promises. I juggle. You have an extra towel? <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown. So just a quick refresher. We learned last week that the Earth is a disc. There's ice around the edge. Dome over the top. Illuminated control of the space movies. With that groundwork laid, we're going <laughs> to rejoin the action with part eight. The creative force, which intentionally misdirects uh, you and makes you think this is going to be out about who created the goddamn dome, right? No. Also reject the groundwork. You laid some. I rejected. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Important that we be clear about this. But okay, so this video is about a person. Uh, apparently, one time he was telling these lies to somebody and it made them sad. <laughs> That's the best. This, he's like, yeah, they uh, they really got sad. Like some people got sad from this. The rest of this science video is going to deal with that. You know, flat Earth melancholy. I'm not exaggerating <laughs> yes. either. He says those words like like people were like. Mm, oh, flat. <laughs> was, my happiness was tied to the geometric shape of this thing. <laughs> yeah, but he's going to help guide us through that depression that we're feeling, I guess. So he's going to start off with a very old story. You see, this isn't the first dome. There were other domes. They might be a master race also, <laughs> by the way. Th that seemed to be what he was describing there. This crazy, like, like basically started describing John Galt's Invisible Valley. Yes. It's <laughs> master race of libertarian tax evaders and their crazy futuristic <laughs> from thousands of years ago society. I don't know. It was very confusing. Yeah. So apparently Wakanda back in the fucking day decided to <laughs> right, build exactly. a, a, a tower to this guy. So, so he's telling the Tower of, of, of Babel, but he's doing it insanely. He starts off with this super high tech culture that didn't know fear or laziness, right? They didn't even have words for those things. So, yeah, so all of the Wakandans decided that they were going to call out the dome builders through their ancient broadcasts, right? They like sent out a radio message saying, hey, dome builders, what the fuck with the dome and shit? I love it. Fuck you, dome. The TV show is the first <laughs> thing these people thought. <laughs> <laughs> just ancient Wakandan Tucker Carlson. Just a reminder, once again, whoever built that dome, <laughs> fuck your face. Fuck, fuck you. Your... <laughs> <laughs> and now, Jersey Shore. <laughs> Domesy Shore. I have no more advertisers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Except but... Except for in... Ken Ham's art part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So they... So, but, the, but the broadcast didn't work. So they build the Tower of Babel, baby. Yeah, and am I alone in when you when I saw the picture of this tower? This tower, it looked an awful lot, lot like some sort of futuristic dildo. It was very clearly fabric. Yes. They were trying to do something to the to the dome, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, like a, like a Tim Burton penis. It was like an expressionist <laughs> penis tower. It was twisty, like skewed, but definitely a dick. Yep. I I love the the idea was that they were just going to build a tower big enough to knock. Ring the bell? What, <laughs> right, what was the plan here? But Dome yeah. guy. Other yeah, side it's like, guy. It's Hello? like when someone's uh, trying to... You see you know, me. They're, they're looking through the windows. Like, I know you're in there. Look, you're hiding behind the sofa, but we can tell that you're in. <laughs> <the door. laughs> don't make me... God damn it. Don't make me build another tower 30 miles away so I can look in the other wind. Motherfucker. <laughs> God shows up at the edge of the dome. They just like diving into the bushes. <laughs> he's, up, he's opening it. He's opening it. <laughs> A seven hundred foot tall flaming bag of poop they presented to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he's stepping on it. 
pissed off. But, look, it wasn't just that they were going to knock on the dome. They they all yelled God. in unison, "We come for you!" And they yelled it so loud the yes. dome shook. Although I think only some of them like they just said they could feel the dome shake because they didn't want people to feel bad. So no, I definitely felt the dome shake. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Honey. <laughs> no, you made it shake, man. It was quivering. Yeah, it was quivering. Um, by the way, does Mark Sargent think the Tower of Babel thing happened in the future? It's like, <laughs> d- does he think that's not a crazy person sentence that I just said? Like, that's, he's he's showing us future stuff, and he's talking about. The Tower of Babel from the Bible, right? Well, yeah, but they were super high tech back then. You see, this is the first go at high tech civilization. This didn't happen on Earth, man. This was under Dome 1.0. So this is a totally different place. Oh. Yeah, this is this was the the super advanced uh, people, the people who didn't have a word for lazy <laughs> or fear, uh, apparently. Which he then he then says, you know, when they found out the truth, yeah. the, the truth about the dome, uh, they weren't afraid of it. They were just arrogant. It's like, yeah, because they didn't have a word for fear. You've built this into your own world here. This is a cohesive world you're building. Yeah, they didn't. Fear. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling, Steve? Uh well, I'll tell you, not that other thing. <laughs> I hope they did have a word for fearless, but it was just like they just didn't know where that word came from. I know we're 100% fearless. <laughs> and also, okay, so this is what fucks with me so much about this. Is he is oddly specific on the details, right? Like he gives us measurements mm-hmm. on the towers, like it was 30 miles wide at the base and hundreds of miles. How, where the fuck is this coming from? Yeah, no idea. yeah, and where's where's any evidence of this? The re- remnants of this tower, if we're still in the same kind of uh, unit, yeah, it's it's yeah. Ludicrous. But of course, the creators of the dome were like, "Oh fuck, man, they're going to show up, and they're not going to believe it when we turn all the lights off and everything." We need to change their languages <laughs> and shit, and and that's when they changed their languages and shit. I never understood this part of the story. Like, I feel like that literally changes nothing. Like, no. The- I've worked on construction jobs with like <laughs> old Irish guys that are incomprehensible. You cannot understand a goddamn word. They're speaking English. I'm in New York, so I know they're technically speaking English, but you you just figure it out. It's mostly like, you know, grunts and hand waving. Like, yeah, put this speak brick the same language. on top of the other brick. Uh, put bricks on the pile. Okay, got it. Yeah, I didn't need you. To, we don't need a language in this. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's not just the language. It's the culture that comes with it, you know, because you change all uh, the builders, the tower to different languages. The French guy keeps going on strike. <laughs> the British ones, they all vote to be out of the tower project, but to still have full access to the creators when the tower project's finished. All right. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. I was going to say the extension for the Brexit from the tower is uh, in a couple of weeks. It's pretty exciting. It's been delayed since 4,000 years ago, but... Yes. <laughs> and any minute now they'll come to an agreement it's just gonna it's gonna no happen. I, I, gonna I have happen. faith in you so so god was like all right how do i deal with this tower this is a pain in the ass i guess i could push it over because i'm god or i could make people have different languages and clothing and food and create a bunch of fake religions to go with my real one start some race wars that's option b <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, what was the first thing I said? Read that back to me. No, nope, <laughs> never mind. Uh, race wars thing was great. Uh, we're doing that. <laughs> yeah. The deity. So God created languages. He destroys the tower or they destroy the tower or whatever. And then real history happened. <laughs> well, well, just before the real history, there's a bit that really confused me because he said all the people who work on the tower, they were scattered and new people were introduced so hang on, where did the first ones go? Because it's an enclosed dome with no end. And how did you get more in when it's an enclosed dome with no walls or anything? Like, did you push them up through one of the volcanoes? Is that where we all came from? Well, I actually have a theory about what they did with the old people. I can't fucking believe this goddamn wow. stupid dome the, right in the fucking the way. I get first all iteration the way off the pissed, fucking huh? highway uh-huh. all this goddamn yeah, they, bullshit they like thing super signs upset. this is gonna be a fucking sky up so here. So mad. And all of a sudden yeah. this goddamn okay, so, motherfucking uh, lumpy over yeah, I guess. Yeah, like yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull over Good. all yeah. of yeah, and Maybe we need to we're split up the languages a bit. Um, you know, Maybe even color them different colors. Oh, good call. Yes, yeah. Look at him. Go. Fucking damn it. What are you going to do with these ones, though? Nonsense. And then on top of that shit, I missed the other fucking exit that I could have taken. Give him a podcast? Yeah. 
God. Yeah, that sounds good. And by, I, 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 I'm going what, what, to drill this podcast? motherfucker with somebody's uh, it, it's, head. It's like the radio. That's what I'm going to fucking do. You know the do. radio? Radios? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, sure, why not? <laughs> So, all right, now this takes a weird, hard shift to tell us about how artsy we are, right? God saw mm. us making art, and he was like, ooh, cool, that's nice. Uh, I bet if I made more forests and jungles and shit, that would inspire them to be more artsy. God didn't think of art on his own. He no. noticed art. He, it was yeah, After yeah. he invented multiple languages, I, I don't understand. <laughs> I love the fact as well that he said uh, p people were doing all this arts kind of stuff and he thought, oh, this is great. So he said they the adjusted the land masses to inspire them more. But he's then therefore suggesting that all of the land masses were changed after we'd already started writing yes, stuff. Right, after right. we'd already started drawing everything. So let, let's let's stick a moon in after <laughs> we've been writing about stuff. The moon was just added afterwards. Like, I want that page of the diary. Like, Dear diary, a weird thing happened today. This new mountain just appeared <laughs> yes, next right. to me out of nowhere. It's, it's, it's a I'm risk. sorry, Gabriel, they got nothing to compare to something that hits your eye like a big pizza pie. Can we do anything about that? <laughs> Thanks. That's great. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so God added mountains and he made uh, bad weather, apparently. Also, this is when they added the moon. If you're a big moon fan, this is where it shows up in history. Um, also, OK, <laughs> here we go. This is an actual sentence. God added stars so that, quote, when the people could see further than their own eyes, there would be more to see. I, okay. Um, yeah, right. No, that would be blindness if you couldn't see further than your own eyes. <laughs> that would be being blind. Does anyone else feel like we're sitting on the hood of Mark Sargent's car and he's trying to sleep with us? <laughs> but he's not super deep. <laughs> you know, when I look up at the stars, I see just stars. Just take your dick out. Come on. Did I say stars? <laughs> but okay, but then he's but look, everything comes with a price. And as Mark Sargent points out here, <laughs> the price of art is war. Race yep. wars. Yep, that was yes. the cost. Yes. God has to do some omnipotent weighing on that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he talks about God and the angels trying to decide, you know, if we should keep the war and lose the art or lose the art and the war to get. Yeah, right. They, that was that was their uh, that was their big decision here. What do you think? Holocaust worth it? Have you guys seen Schindler's List? It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I got guns. I got butter. I don't know. It's, it's God, but I can't just have both, all of it. Uh. But he, he still hasn't actually said it's God and the angels. Right. Because right. he's still talking about the dawn builders. And, and this is important because this comes up later on. I get very confused later on and we'll get there. But he hasn't fully fleshed out the entirety of this worldview because he's just got dawn builders who have built the dawn to keep us in. And yeah, that's that's who were deciding whether to kill us off because of wars like the dickheads that they are. That's who, uh, who we're talking about here. Yeah, right. Right, <laughs> right. And, and we will come back to that. I'm, I'm glad you made that distinction. We will come back to that because there's a have, a have your cake and eat it too moment in the next one. So, yeah, and at a certain point here, he realizes that this is supposed to be making us happy. And he just told us that, you know, the people who control our existence decided war was OK if they got an occasional poem. Um, and then <laughs> how's that so, melancholy doing? Now? Yeah, right. <laughs> now that you know about that poem. <laughs> and but now he goes like, also, by the way, this still counts. Even if you're bereft of artistic talent, you don't have to be able to make poems <laughs> for this to matter. You might inspire someone yeah. to make a poem. Yeah, you don't have to have a lot of artistic talent. You could just put together YouTube videos <laughs> yes. with random Google images. That's fine. That's still valid. It's still counts. Even, Some would say even better. if they still have the fucking watermark on them. Yeah, you can still... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, even if the images flash by so quickly that you feel it'll be a new technique, this is full on clockwork orange to you. Yeah, at this point, we're just watching a music video about ADHD. That it's just completely <laughs> unrelated right. stuff bla blasting up and down. It's nonsense. Like, oh. like Mark Sargent trying to improvise a song, just yelling out words. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, and then we get, uh, oh, God, this is where we get the truncated Einstein quote that misses the point. What, boy, in that this movie in a nutshell, the imagination is more important than knowledge bit. 
Yeah, yeah. Says the guy who spent 10 minutes talking about a made-up conversation that had been had by made-up creators and they were having about these made-up towers and the made-up tower yeah. builders. <laughs> Imagination's more important yeah, than it, See? See? Einstein agrees. Yeah, no, there's more to that quote, man. And by the way, <laughs> right after that, as he's talking about the importance of iman- imagination and, and artistry, he shows a picture of sexy women drinking blood from the slit throats of men hanging upside down over plates. I just thought we should at least acknowledge that it wasn't related to anything. Wow. I, I missed that somehow. I don't know how I missed. It. I must have been watching like a bunch of black shirt players play basketball or something. I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. All right. But yeah. So now again, he, he shifts back to the melancholy and he goes like mountains were built for you. Oceans were built for you. And I'm like, that's why the secular narrative has such an uphill battle. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But then he says, and someday you'll die, and that's going to be awesome. I'm like, okay, no, that's the reason the secular narrative has there such an uphill battle. <laughs> Always the upsell at the end. And he's really <laughs> starting to show his, uh, his hand here, because he says right near the very end, he says, the world is a hell of a ride. Imagine what the next yes. one will be like. It's, oh, I see uh, where we're going with this, Mark. We are doing Christian singer yeah, after all, right. aren't we, Mark? This okay. counts, doesn't it? Yeah. starving kid in Africa gets to the next world. He's also a starving kid in Africa. What? <laughs> Twice in a row. Oh, okay. I got to admit, uh, the third one, <laughs> two strikes is all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. So now we move on to part nine, uh, which is titled The Magic Show. And I'm sure Eli was stoked about his profession uh, getting a mention here. There is nothing more discouraging than something you've spent 11 years on being the first thing a flat earther thinks of. Let me tell you. (laughs) All right. So he starts this one off by saying, hey, you know, this is an idea that popped out all that extensive airplanes don't fly directly from keep men shoot Namibia to humpy bong Australia research. I was telling you about a couple of videos earlier. And yes, by the way. Humpy bong is a real place. That's an actual Australian place. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yep. <laughs> but anyway, they don't let you. Don't go there, Heath. <laughs> Waste your weekend. I'll tell you right now. Also, this is where we learn the first rule of magic. This is a quote: "The first rule of magic: assume the rule isn't being broken, only hidden." And I can confirm that is not the first rule of magic or English. <laughs> nope, <fun fact. laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> Eli, is there a first rule of magic? Absolutely. What's the first rule of magic? Never talk about Fight Club. Okay, so, <laughs> damn it. So, yeah, so, the okay, but basically this video is him acknowledging that a bunch of people wrote into him and said, like, hey, man, you can fly straight from Johannesburg to Perth, right? Like we were talking about last week. Yeah, He's going yeah. like, all right, all right, smart guys. But, but are they real flights, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he says it like he isn't acknowledging that he he, he like he fucked up previously because he basically says this video it's it's him researching. I did a, a bunch more research. Yeah, but you did research about the claims that you made in <laughs> video seven. You should have done that research yeah, before right. video seven. <laughs> that is the time to research video seven. Since video seven, I learned that ninety five percent is like like nineteen twentieths of the whole max. <laughs> that people wrote in to explain that to me. I understand that now. I yeah. understand that now. But they're fake flights. Those are fake. The other five. Yeah, there's only only 5%. It's, it's, it's minor. It's 5% of all sudden flights. It's just 5% that prove him wrong. You know, those are ones that are that are the problem here. But 5%, there's like 37.5 million flights per year. There's 10 million, <laughs> let's say there's 10 million or so in the South. If that's true, 5% of that is half a million flights that would have to be fake <laughs> yes. for him to be right here. 1,400 fake flights per day would have to be happening. Yeah, and he goes... You know, he's like, I saw this, but that's a violation of the third rule of flat earth. The flat earth has no shortcuts. And right there, I I wrote in my notes, like, please tell me the first two rules so that we don't talk about flat earth. Spoiler, (laughs) they are. Um, (laughs) And what is he saying there? He's saying that only a globe has shortcuts. I think he might have actually said that sentence. Yeah. And like, what the fuck does that like? Does a cube have shortcuts? Like what, <laughs> what shapes are the ones that he thinks violate space time and which don't? So no, I, I do actually get this. I do get this because he because a cube has shortcuts. If you look at the net of a cube compared to a cube and you try and go from a corner in the top left of the net to the bottom right of the net on a cube, you just 
go right around the corner because it is a cube and not of two dimensional shape. So he's on about, you can't just like zip over the South Pole kind of area. You have to do mm-hmm. the long way around if the Southern Hemisphere is spread around the edge. Uh, so, but it's the idea that he's kind of said, uh, well, this is the map here. There are no shortcuts. Oh shit. This is, this doesn't right. work at all. They must be cheating. Now let's find out how they must be faking it. Cause otherwise I'm completely wrong and that can't be true. But yeah, that's what he means by the shortcuts is the zip. The, the, the shortest. Bottom. No, sorry. The longest distance. The longest between distance two between two points. Is two to points keep going around the, the equator over and over, and over and over. So. You spiral in and then you spiral out and then you land in Australia. It's pretty easy. So. All right. So, but to disprove all of this, there are two direct flights in the Southern Hemisphere bullshit. He goes to planefinder.net. <laughs> For a second, yeah. I was so sure he was going to get on a plane and just, we were going to see Mark Sargent just ranting in the aisle to people like, look outside. Are we going to, why, south, is this the Southern Hemisphere? How did we disappear? Why aren't we on GPS? Oh, <laughs> we don't get any of that. But it was even, but his, okay, but his, his research was even sillier, right? Cause he's like, ah, oh, but what are those fake flights? And I'm like, yeah, I guess you'd have to like book one of those flights and you could find out. And he's like, nope, nope. I'm, I'm better than that. I, I went to planefinder.net, one of these websites where you can track all commercial <laughs> flights and watched it for days. Yeah. I There's, stared at my yeah. computer screen at little plane icons for days because of all the sanity you see. <laughs> And this is a really, really minor point, but he illustrates all of his points with the still continuing flashing Google images. And this would have been a perfect time to just show us a screen capture of you, of that, uh, you know, a time lapse of you on that website so we can actually see the evidence in front of us. But no, no, here's a picture of a plane. Here's a picture of a plane near some water. Here's a, a Yeah, totally here's a couple of satanic image. witches drinking the, the blood of someone for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is so easy to show us the evidence here, Mark, and you still didn't yeah, do it, man. That's right. Come on. So the argument he's making, you see, is that when you watch those websites, planes that are over the Indian Ocean or the Southern Pacific just disappear and then reappear once they're trackable by ground-based radar again. Shh, shh. <laughs> I, I'm assuming. I, I actually don't know why this would be, but I'm assuming that's it, that there's some ground-based system that's tracking them. So, so it basically is exactly that. So he's right that all, he keeps talking about GPS and he's absolutely right that at all times planes are in contact with a, with, you know, they've got their GPS signal. They know where they are, but the GPS is beaming the signal from the satellite mm-hmm. down to you. You're not beaming it back up to the satellite and then that being passed on to, you know, planefinder.net. How air traffic control monitors this stuff is the planes tell air traffic control where they are with a kind of, with either via radar or via kind of radio signal. So when the planes at all time have their GPS signal, they're just not telling anyone when there's no one around them to tell. And that's why when you're in the middle of nowhere, there's no one to send that information to conveniently. It's really easy if you just Google this. Mark. It's, right there. it's not even hard yeah, to find. And he kept saying that he was like, I'm watching a plane going from Brazil to Africa. I'm going to see this happen. And he's on one of these sites. And then he's like, nope, nothing. I watched for weeks. But then the website proved me right. While I was up getting a drink, I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. I was fucking my girlfriend from Canada, and <laughs> when then I, came I back, was right. The earth when I was came flat. Back. <laughs> and I literally turned on one of these fucking tracker sites just to be like, all right, what is he talking? Is this real? I went to like, you know, airplanesalongasphere.net, and there were <laughs> planes in the South Pacific and Indian Oceans each time I clicked on it. Yes. Line. Well, yeah, he eventually admits that, too, and he goes, right, right, but those are just estimates. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. They're all estimates. Yes! God damn it. <laughs> How big does he think airplanes are? <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> I have one other question just about his general theory. If the flat earth is, Marsh, what'd you say? It, it's accelerating upwards at 9.8 <laughs> meters per second squared? Would, yeah, it could be, yeah, depending on your, your version of Wouldn't the ground yeah. just smash into the airplane right after it takes <laughs> off and starts losing its upward push from the crazy fast elevator yeah, I- on? I don't know how they deal with that because it's either either they go for the upward acceleration or they go for the density model. But either one of those, the plane yeah. wouldn't be able to take off. I don't know how they deal with upward thrust, like with with a plane sort of a cruising altitude. I have no idea. I'll have to figure that one out. I've never heard any of them. Oh, deal with we that took off for a second. No, we're about. Oh. <laughs> 
We gotta go. No, it just felt it felt it. I thought in my stomach. I thought I had. We didn't. No, we're still down. We're we're running into the flat Earth version of midi chlorians. It's like okay, wait, we're using dense. So the plane must take off at twenty five times the speed of light. And so when you all planes go into the past. Stupid. Oh, that's why it feels like it takes so long to take off, y'all. The time dilation. <laughs> that's why pilots can't land. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. All right. So then he's like, you know, now you might think it's that the government just doesn't care where you are uh, when you're over the South Pacific or whatever. But he's like, but do you really think the American government would let you just travel around the world willy nilly without keeping track of you? Of course not. It's once again, it's one what? of these. Obviously, it's, we can all agree the moon landing was faked kind of things. <laughs> it's yeah, it's 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 incredible. And I also the thing we're dealing with here really is he's looking at a map, and because the plane goes off the map and he can't see it anymore, he thinks the plane stops existing. He struggles here with object permanence. <laughs> That's what we're. He he's he's the child who's confused by people. <laughs> I can't see you anymore. <laughs> therefore, you disappear. Oh. Some toddler gets on YouTube, makes an 18 part series. My dad vanishes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But OK. And then he's just like, you know, OK. So and then uh, they, they have to hide all the planes. And of course, if you hide one plane, you have to hide all of them, except for the ones in the northern hemisphere and or over land. Do you have to hide some mm. other other ones so that this all makes sense? But you get it. <laughs> So that I don't make this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. right. Like, yeah, yeah. what's this Spartacus airline here that I'm finding on these? <laughs> what? Why do all the ocean flights have Thomas Crown hats in the graphics? <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't all the pilots have to be let in on this scam at some point? Like, what's that meeting like? Okay, everyone, welcome to flight school. What I'm about to tell you, future pilots, is perhaps history's greatest secret. The Earth is flat. That's right, it's flat. And I know, it's shocking, it's shocking. Mm. But as a result, you'll all be part of a worldwide conspiracy the entirety of your careers. Fake flight maps, fake GPS locations, everything. And of course, none of you must ever tell anyone. Now, any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, why do we wear, like... These, like, admiral stripes. We're not in the military. Just seems weird. Ooh, yeah. Oh, you, you know, also, how come How come we all go, uh, like that when we get on the intercom? What is that all about? Oh, uh, is there one button that turns on the seatbelt light? And, and, and do we turn it on? Or does someone else actually do that? Because they say it's us. Yeah. <sighs> Every time. Uh, uh, why are we so bad at landing is my last Ooh, question. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I want to know that too. Why can't we land our planes? We should be able to land them? Like 100% of the time. That seems like one of the most important two things. Maybe the top. Okay, but you do suck at landing. Though. Well, I know some, time, of some of them, some of them are, <laughs> are pretty good at it. It seems like I, see, I feel like I feel like they're better than we would be. Um, Now... They won't let me fly the plane. I, they keep arresting me. <laughs> Cowards. And the thing, the thing to bear in mind is this whole video is called The Magic Show. And what he's describing here, if it were a magic trick, it's basically the equivalent of, okay, now, if you just close your eyes for a yeah, second. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> now you turn around and I'll put my hands under this table, right? The famous 11-hour magic trick. Now, if you'll all navigate to magictrickwatcher.org, you'll now, find that your card is estimated to be the nine of diamonds. <laughs> Was your card <laughs> elephant penis? Is that what you're touching right now? <laughs> so, okay. And then I, I just love this little line he throws in at the end. He's like, now some of you will see this video and say, well, damn it, Mark. Now you've told them what they need to fix because, <laughs> because some of you are fucking idiots. You kind of would have to be. <laughs> <laughs> like fi fix it by rolling the earth into a sphere? I guess, like, like, yeah. <laughs> That's the key. All right, but then we get to the good stuff, the bit we've been waiting for, part 10, hiding God. There it is. There it is. This yeah, video... Yeah, we, got, we got here. This video starts with, man, that was a lot of bullshit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it really does. If you've made it this far through the guide, because I'm guessing many people haven't made it this far through the guide. You're still watching? Wow. Just <laughs> right. Wow. You're probably on our team now or on the fence, he says. Yeah, um, he says if you've made it through the first nine videos, you're either buying into the model or you're on the fence. And <laughs> first of all, no. No. Absolutely not. No, some of us are just <laughs> but, professional masochists. But he shows the fence, and I just really, like, I wanted to be there in person next to him and just, like, touch his screen and, like, do a little photo editing and just, like, curl the fence into a circle and be like, <laughs> shh, Mark, shh, just look. Just go. Give me a second. Imagine a, a rat second. in there. Imagine. Mind blown. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Okay. And, and then he lists two really easily provable ways that he could be wrong. He's just like, I mean, I guess if you had a private plane, it would be super easy to prove how wrong I am. But still, don't yeah, fly but, to the but, edge of the earth, I, though. I don't, <laughs> though. I don't. So, uh, he, he says, nobody owns uh, this rocket. Um, nobody owns <laughs> this icebreaker ship that I'm showing you on the screen. I feel right like now. somebody owns that so, icebreaker yeah. ship. <laughs> Wait, I gotta, I gotta rewind to this sentence. This was my favorite sentence in all 14 videos. He says at one point, he goes, if you're still with me, you'll agree that the world you've been taught has been kept from you. Those were the words. <laughs> I mean, I don't agree with you about anything, but it would be physically impossible for me to agree with you about that. Okay. <laughs> And I mean, the the whole section here is that he thinks there's an anti God conspiracy, right? Yep. Like, yeah. Based on how religion never really took off on this planet, <laughs> he thinks that like Big Globe is winning against God at a game. The omnipotent God is losing at a game to the atheists. That's his theory. But this is where he's totally lost track of what he was previously saying, though. Really, because his point is the the existence of God is being kept hidden from us by. The people who built the dome, which previously he was alluding to as being God. So who, yeah. who are the ones who built the dome if not God? And what the hell is the point of God if he didn't build the dome? If he's not the respon one responsible for building the world and putting us on here, that's the dome builders. What the fuck is God? Oh. Well, you know, that's the thing. That's what got me out of the conspiracy theory worldview to begin with was the, th was the moment when I realized that you can wait forever. They're not going to connect those dots. It's just about putting <laughs> dots out there, right? Oh, uh, God and the secret Jews show up to Earth on the same day with equal domes. You were going to put a dome? We were going to put a dome down. <laughs> I feel like, it, I mean, do you want to use yours? Does yours have a moon? Yeah, ours has a moon. Ha! You guys. Get out of here. What do you call it? Filament, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no way. What, you, you've got a moon. Oh, I, I mean, I was just going to add the moon later. I was sure like, doing drawing. <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, a moon from the start makes sense. It makes sense. Seems like it would be pointless until there's art. All right, so Get now, estimates. so this is amazing. He 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 gives us a few things that we can do, right? And I, I, I wrote in my notes right here. I said, I bet observe a lunar eclipse doesn't make the list. But before <laughs> but before he gets to that, he goes. Just whatever you do, don't start conversations with the word flat earth because that's not a word. It's two. Also, sentences <laughs> in English don't generally start with the subject. Like, what would you, what sentence are you, flat earth is a thing <laughs> that I believe. How is that sentence yeah, even it's possible to start a conversation that way? <laughs> flat earth right. blowjob. Now that I have your attention, <laughs> flat earth, flat earth, flat earth. Or, damn it. I keep doing it. <laughs> Yeah. He also says he does bring up the Fight Club thing. Uh, he, inevitably, he brings up the Fight Club thing. First rule of Flat, uh, uh, flat Club is do not talk about yeah, Flat Club. Uh -huh. uh, flat Club. Yeah. Says a guy who's now 90 minutes into his 14 part <laughs> series on Flat Club. You are breaking your own rules here very clearly. Two hours. And I did think the, the entire of his video structure has been to just show you random images. He missed an opportunity to splice a single frame of pornography in his video at this point. He really missed that trick. We really needed a big black dick right there, Mark. Go back, re-edit. <laughs> but right, but when he said that, he's like, the first rule is you don't talk about this. I'm like, well, shouldn't you have to shut the fuck up and let us watch puppies falling asleep or something? Come on. No, yeah, I mean, if... if if we all, if Mark has to agree that he can't talk about Flat Earth, I'm on board with the Flat Earth at this point. If it means Mark stops talking about it, it's like, yeah, yeah, you're right, Flat Club, it exists, but Mark, you've got to stop talking about it, so please <laughs> never say another thing or publish another video, right? Wink, Good. wink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got this. I'm making a movie about 
the heightfully challenged earth. I mean, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> He goes Euphemism. like, he's like, don't watch my videos. Other videos are out there with some great arguments. I'm like, could you borrow a few of them? Maybe <laughs> spice your shit up. Anyway, so now he moves on to his three important questions for us to ask those silly round earthers. Um, each is preceded by a statement. Statement one. It's just going to get sillier from here. Statement one. You are being hidden. <laughs> When you fly over the Southern Hemisphere, when you're flying from Johannesburg to Perth, as we are often want to do, you're not being tracked <laughs> by the GPS tracking system he thinks exists. Also, right now I'm being hidden. I'm not tracked now. <laughs> I mean. Well, so you think anyway. Um, yeah, but but his advice here is literally to send a letter to your congressman or your MP, whoever and ask them why they don't track their citizens over the treacherous southern oceans. Yeah. <laughs> but, but make sure you don't Google it on the way. That's going to be in the letter. It's like, could you tell me without Google why you don't track I, I can't, can't uh, emphasize that enough. This is a closed book exam. <laughs> He's like, but don't mention flat earth, so they'll have no fucking clue what you're getting at. I, yeah. But this is where he starts like really showing a, a not necessarily a pernicious side, but certainly a deceptive side, because he's literally saying this is how you get the flat earth information out there by deceiving people into asking the certain kind of questions. So for him to be the truth teller who's breaking apart the conspiracies and, and blowing up all the secrets, he's literally saying lie to people to yep. get them to question this here. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, it's like the pro-organic food guys out there going like, you know, food companies are ripping you off and selling you bullshit. I'm like, yeah, they, they are, man. They, they've, <laughs> they've roped you into their thing, too. And he goes, I, I love, too, at the end of this advice, he's like, will anything useful come from this? Not a chance. <laughs> We're just keeping your congressman from doing other shit is all. All right. So now we get to his second statement, which is, Wealth is being hidden. They're hiding all that sweet, sweet Antarctic coal money, y'all. I, I love that his his second tactic is like try to appeal to Halliburton's bloodlust for oil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and and doesn't he say ask all your friends who work in just oil at all? At, yeah. In any way. Yeah. Yeah. Like the guy who runs the counter up there at the uh, at the BP. Yeah. Go ask that. Yes, dude. exactly. <laughs> you could just picture Mark Sargent bothering the guy who pumps the gas. Hey, uh, how come you're not headed to the South Pole right now? Come on, man. <laughs> just well, I watched this and I was kind of surprised by this bit because I, funny enough, I've worked in the oil industry for twelve years. Uh, at po various points in my marketing career, I've worked for Shell for twelve years. So I thought, God, I sh really should not <laughs> ask everybody I know in the oil industry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm oh, going to lose okay. I'll very much lose all jobs interesting uh, Marsh I, I just wanted to ask you something really quick um, and just to shout out your answer sure. as, fast, as fast as you hear alright ready I'm going to ask you a few questions in like quick succession uh, okay Coke or Pepsi uh, Coke penis or vagina penis <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what the question was are you hiding a secret about the shape of Antarctica <laughs> yes oh we got him we got yeah, him it's, yeah, it's, it's square it's, it's, it's a massive square Keith, I don't want to bury your flat earth lead here, but we just had our married friend Marsh confess that he was gay live on our podcast. <laughs> well, it depends. I wasn't sure if the question was, do you have a penis or a vagina or would, would you like a penis or a vagina? So, Well, what, it, 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 I mean, coming after the Coke or Pepsi thing, I feel like that should have been obvious. At the very least, it was a Freudian slip. Um, I might have a cork. I, I might have a cork right here. And, and he's asking, do you have a cork or a Pepsi right now? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, but basically he says, well, you know how oil companies are where they smell money. We can get them to do the work for us. But then he moves on to his third statement. And before he does, he's like, let me, first of all, thank all the people who sent me biblical scripture about this. I'm like, oh, those are words I'll never say outside of a quote. <laughs> he's like, look, I've been dancing around the obvious for too long now. Yes, it's all the Bible stuff that you guys keep sending me and the firmament and everything. So we get around to the third statement, which should be God is being hidden because it was you are being hidden, wealth is being hidden. But he's too fucking stupid to keep with the format that he's been using. So the third <laughs> statement is they are hiding God. 
<laughs> Which is weird because if he'd gone with God was being hidden, he wouldn't have to confront the fact that he's now seeing there is a conspiracy do hide God directly. He could have kept it in like a passive voice right. and never have to confront the no. idea of someone grander than God, more powerful than God, is hiding the proof of God. <laughs> yeah. No, instead yeah. he just goes on this whole, like, you know, if they're hiding God and you ask them, they have to tell you kind of a rant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right, we found the firmament in 1956 with a rocket, I guess. And then the atheist Illuminati did the globe scam. That's what he's saying. Yep. And he's saying that God was like, fuck, I did not see that coming. All right. Ugh. Next time, atheists. Next time. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. This this will undo it. Let's blow up the challenger. That way they'll know what these <laughs> really <laughs> Yeah, although I, there is one point I agree with him on here. He's like, look, if you're a person of faith, this flat earth thing should not be a huge jump for you. And it shouldn't. It really nope. shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, I love he also appeals to our uh, I, I don't know, our fucking inner Thor or whatever. Where He's like, hey, if you don't want to be a superhero, you don't have to be a superhero. Look at all these superheroes you could be like if it's you expose the, the flat earth. Look, like, I understand not everyone can be a hero like me, but, you know. Smash that subscribe button. I'm pretending this is a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, but then he closes this on this weird out and this is my best worst. This, this his well is part of it. His weird out of nowhere conclusion. And he's like, and think about it. If we could just all agree that the world was flat, we would learn to treat each other better than we treat ourselves. What? What? <laughs> yeah you lost me Mark <laughs> how'd you get there but take me we're there do, Mark we're doing spheres and hate motherfuckers <laughs> spheres <laughs> and hate yeah or at the very least cubes and indifference but also I love too at the very end of this he points out one of the biggest weaknesses in his own argument he goes like uh, you know and if you think about it the only thing we'd need to prove it is any one of the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that would have to be in on this scam to come forward and confirm it with evidence. Just one. <laughs> yeah. Just just one. Yeah, Julian, and, and Julian Assange found the dome and he got. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> And there's an amazing bit right at the very end. So he's always been ending with like his phone number, his email address. That was ridiculous enough. He ends this one with his home address yeah. and asks you to send him cookies. <laughs> and the thing is, that seems deeply unwise. Now, I know the Flat Earth community and they're a, a broad bunch. But like, there's one chap in the Flat Earth community who's very prominent in the Flat, flat Earth community, a chap called Dave Murphy, who not only is a Flat Earther, but also washes and drinks his own urine. Oh, God. So you don't want a guy who washes his own urine sending you home-baked cookies through the polls because he likes your work. Okay, I want to be very clear. The audience, Marsh, is not suggesting that you say urine-soaked cookies to Mark Sargent. That's not at all the point of that story. No winks. Absolutely. Dry them off. Dry them off. The, 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 the postal service won't deliver something if it's wet. That's one of their rules. <laughs> It's not the rule in America. So <laughs> <laughs> They'll watch you urinate in a box and send it. They're just happy for anyone to be there. Yeah, right. At this point. <laughs> All right. So now it's time to move on to part 11 called Souls in the System, which is all about how you can change the world and matter on a very deep level if you just believe the earth isn't round. And this is where we get a reference to a movie that I cannot wait to do because I immediately sought it out, which is called Astronauts Gone Wild. <laughs> yes. You know that episode of Borat where they punched Sasha Baron Cohen in the face? No? Then you will love Astronauts Gone Wild. <laughs> So I assumed this was a, a film about astronauts, you know, opening up their spacesuits because they're drunk on spring right, break. Right. Uh, and obviously at that point, they immediately suffocate because yeah. they're in space. That's why you have the spacesuit. Just, just, just a bunch of aliens right outside the dome with beads. Show us your boobies! <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was I was with you, Eli. He goes, now if you miss this video, I'm like, oh, not for long, buddy. And then and that was before I realized this was the movie from the guy that Buzz punched. Right? That's that's, yes. that's this yep. guy. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> I watched the punching video a good forty times the other night, just because it reminded me of it. I love it. 
It's such a yeah. That's back when uh, back when everyone agreed video. we could punch people out of bad ideas. <laughs> what happened? What happened in the intermediary years when Nazis came? Yeah, Captain you should do that, I guess. Yeah. But like, I don't know, old man astronaut. Like, I yeah. I be if you're more an old man astronaut, still don't. But <laughs> if, yeah. I, I do make that exception. If you're an old man astronaut, though, you can punch anybody you want, uh, or an old woman. I think just astronaut. old man. Let's just go all, yeah, just go old people. No, nah, I know too many old assholes. Times. And look, I'll tell you what, Marsh, you live around the old people, the racist assholes around here. No, you, 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 you can't, they can't be trusted with that kind of power. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> like a can... Tommy Robinson rally when the press shows up, Marsh. Think ahead. Think ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But so this is, the, so here's the story of this documentary. Apparently this guy lied to a bunch of astronauts and told them that this was a legitimate documentary. Uh, the, the the Apollo astronauts, the ones that have been to the moon. Then when they got to the interview, he asked them to swear on the Bible that the moon landing really happened, after which he asked a series of technical questions designed to trip up the astronauts. When did you stop beating your moon type stuff, apparently? <laughs> By the way, spoiler alert, because we are absolutely going to do that documentary someday. As someone who watched it, they either, one, nail his questions to the wall, or two, are like, that's not what astronauts do. You'd have to speak to NASA about that. That was be ground control. And he's like, hmm, ground control. He's like, don't, <laughs> Likely story. don't just repeat what I said. I'm Buzz Aldrin. I will punch you in the head. <laughs> I have an IQ of 43. I mean, there's a reasonable chance that uh, that, that guy, thought, especially Mark Sargent, would think that ground control were the people in charge of keeping it flat and keeping it sticking its round. <laughs> right, right. Interesting that you can keep your control on the ground, even though you're a space agency. Bullshit. <laughs> right. But, of course, the real answer that they refused to swear on the Bible, they didn't. The real reason they refused to swear on the Bible is because they know God is real and when everyone realizes the world is flat, they'll stop being gay. I'm confused. What is <laughs> he made a skip? But so those astronauts probably saw God up close when they were up by the firmament. So I get it. I got it. You know, like it's it's like when you get mad at somebody online, it's different if you know them, if they have a face. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, OK, but this is God in this case. So like they'd go up there and they'd see God the astronauts, and then they'd be afraid of lying on the Bible, but not afraid of participating in the decades of conspiracy. And to like, cover up the existence of God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like they, they got yeah, up to the yeah. dome and God was like, all right, uh, you made it, fine. If you're going to start an atheist global conspiracy, that's fine. Just don't touch the Bible. It's the one thing. <laughs> don't, he goes, and it's don't great because Mark keeps going back to this Bible thing and he's saying, why not lie and drove? People commit perjury all the time. It's, oh, God, that didn't used to be the case in America. <laughs> yeah. It turns into a lot of social laws. <laughs> yeah, but I did love the whole bit where Mark Sargent's going, God, what's so hard about lying, people? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says, like, knowing that the earth is flat, it would stop you lying. And it says the guy who literally 10 minutes ago was telling people to right. not say the words flat earth when they're converting people, <laughs> to lie about your intentions when you're proselytizing. I also love, too, he's like, uh, you know, he, at one point he's like, but think about it from the astronaut's point of view. If you'd actually seen some of the creator's handiwork firsthand, you'd feel the same way. I'm like, didn't he create mountains and, and, and <laughs> fucking come? I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> And he also says, well, you know, they knew a bolt of lightning wasn't going to strike him down, but still. So, like, again, did God mention that? Like, they, <laughs> he took that like, off the table, flew back to the dome and God just like sitting there in the dark, like the, like the angry mom who stayed up late. His foot. <laughs> just like, OK, well, you're finally back. Uh, last thing, I do not have lightning powers, but still <laughs> just don't be a dick. No Bibles and, you know, something different than lightning. Right. You don't know. The assumption here is that astronauts would have flown up to the firmament, seen the work of the creator of the universe and been like, yeah, but we promised everybody these little rocks and this video of us bouncing around a little bit. And race wars and art. I, I can't. Uh, to, they have haven't made Wayne's up. World 2 yet. And I just really... <laughs> I'm a bit of an artist myself. I know well, you so <laughs> created the universe. We're doing a thing down there. 
But okay, but so here now he's 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 really trying to drill home this exam this explanation of like, but think about it: if they saw and knew God existed, they would be better people, right? They would be. Do you nice. have a metaphor? I'm very confused. Okay, I do, I do. You know how when the light turns red, you just fucking go because fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going like, I don't do that, Mark. Give me a different one. I stop when the light's red. He starts saying, but then, but when there's a camera watching you, you stop at the red lights. I am so terrified of people who cannot comprehend following a law when no one's watching. (laughs) So the metaphor is God's like uh, an empty cop car parked on the highway. Yes, with a dummy in it. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And I mean, the the people who did the dome, why don't they just paint, like they've got a projection of all the stars and things on the dome. Why don't they just project God onto the dome? (laughs) That would just help. wagging his finger. Did he just skip? No, he didn't skip. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, also, like... Ed Harris? I don't want to <laughs> go too hard on Mark here, but one of the things that disproves his everyone would be nice theory is this podcast, you know, where we bully people, record it, and then send it out into the world for people to enjoy. I'm just saying God's <laughs> present. Well, I'd just be like, great, one more download. Click. <laughs> just start yelling up at the dome. Patreon.com slash God awful. Well, also, like, he, he literally says, he, these are his exact words. He's like, would you rob a bank or embezzle if you knew there was a God? I'm like, how much recreational <laughs> bank robbery is your audience doing, man? <laughs> Jesus. And and he ends this point uh, accidentally by saying, like, yeah, imagine how great it would be if God just revealed himself to exist. And I was like, yes, imagine, <laughs> yeah. imagine how great that would be. We just need but one whistle blower. Just do it once. Yeah, no, his actual line is, if the world, this is an actual quote from the goddamn video. This is my best worst there for. He's like, if the world is a dome, not a globe... Then war ends. Hate crimes end. Maybe not overnight, but quickly. What? Uh, <laughs> I know I know the earth is a dome, but I got, I got like two or three more hate crimes that just got to get done. And then <laughs> I got to kill a couple more Jews <laughs> now that it's a dome. That's it. I got to put a hard limit on that. And, and he ends this video as the world's worst hostage negotiator with the... <laughs> With the dome hiders, he's like, okay, authority, come, I'm going to count to three. One, <laughs> two, two and a half. You Tell everyone you've gone. been hiding that the universe is a dome. Uh, <laughs> come on, cut it out. Seriously, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this was, I got to say, a hugely disappointing moment for me because up until now, I, this is a, a series of videos, but I'd been watching one video that compiled all of them together. Or at least almost all of them. It only went through part 11. So the entire time I was watching this, I'm just going, all right, 20 more minutes to go. Oh, 10 more minutes to go. This video only took me through part 11. So at this point, I realized there were still three more goddamn videos to go. So before we suffer through those, we're going to take <laughs> oh, a quick man. break. It's like you were flying across the South Pacific. Yeah, for just a second, right? Uh, you will need to take a layover right now, no <laughs> Yeah, I do. I absolutely do. Uh, first, let me give parts 12 through 14 the hard sell here. Are the Illuminati hiding God? How omnipotent is a God that can be hidden? Shouldn't we just be able to say Allah, Allah, oxen free or something? Find out the answers (laughs) to these questions and more when we return for the babbling conclusion of Flat Earth Clues. Neil, Buzz, thanks so much for coming in. Pleasure to be here. Buzz Aldrin. You remember Michael Marshall from our British office? Oh, of course. Buzz Aldrin. Right, so we just wanted to go over your your cover stories, just just in case anybody interviews you. You know, make sure we're all on the same page about this. Oh, of course. Buzz Aldrin. Right. Uh, For example, when people ask you how the moon was, you say... Uh, The beauty and the spectrum of space is unmatched in its... Um, Yeah. Uh, Okay, okay. Um, And and if Mm. you're asked to swear on the Bible, what are you going to do? Uh, don't touch it, because then the demons will do to me whatever they did to Buzz. Buzz Aldrin. I know they did, Buzz. I know they did. (laughs) 
And we're back for more of this shit. And we'll rejoin the action with video number 12, which is called Real Eyes. I'd love to know what kind he thinks we have now. <laughs> But, but They're this... like little discs. They're kind of just flat. <laughs> they go right. <laughs> so, yeah, but this clue will be about what we perceive with our eyes. Yeah. And basically saying, like, does vision actually work? Like, you can be deceived by stuff. And he's saying this, like, <laughs> like according to my research with my eyes, <laughs> um, photons are a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> <laughs> Again, said the motion picture I'm watching. Yeah, that's, no, he's like, he's like, can you trust things that you see with your own eyes? I'm like, I'm watching you. No, obviously <laughs> yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. I want to be clear. Is the point of this video that the creators of the dome that might or might not be God created our eyes to fall for illusions to make it easier to trap us <laughs> yeah. inside a, a dome? Perhaps yep. an unlicensed clip of the Truman Show would help, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, I know this isn't related to Flat Earth at all. I hate when conspiracy theorists use the Truman Show as an example. It's such a wonderful movie that is not about their stupid bullshit mm. borderline <laughs> schizophrenia. And everyone's always like, oh, yeah, like it's a secret plot. And it's like, no, nah, it's about art and how... Art becomes you and it's hard to be trapped. It's fine. It's fine. It's about how the earth is flat. Sure. Yeah. By the way, Marsh, what's the theory on this part? Basically, they're showing us Ed Harris and he's up in his like moon station in the movie, right? And yeah, he's, yeah. And he's running the sun from the moon station and like project projecting it to you so we could see it. Like, but what's the theory on, you know, like heat? What, is it like a <laughs> lava machine up there too on the moon that shoots heat? At us? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think they really think that fully through. I do know that Mark Sargent believes that the sun, that the moon gives off light that isn't just reflecting the sun's light. But right. He does think the sun gives off heat because he said to me when I, when I spoke to him that we know the moon is its own independent light source because sunlight is warm, whereas moonlight is cold. <laughs> oh, God. If you wait, oh, oh, I'm moonlight, sorry, wait. Wait. No, wait. that's his point. <laughs> It's not oh, just. Is cold. It's not just not hot, but it's it's actually cold. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, so he said, if you, it's like the if you, faucet twists. Yeah, yeah. He said if you uh, if you put a, a thermometer in the shadow uh, when it's moonlight, if you put the, the uh, a thermometer in the shadow uh, and observe the temperature, and then move it from the shaded area that it's in into an exposed area that, that uh, is able to get the moon to it, but arguably is exposed to other things as well, uh, the temperature drops. And that's nothing to do wow. with the movement of air. It's all to do with so, uh, moonlight. Moon photons are anti-photon matter. Yes. Yeah. They just annihilate temperature degrees. <laughs> what? They carry cold with it, yeah. The moon shoots right, cold. Right, to balance yes. out the sun. Well, because, what, because the moonlight moves so slowly, you see. <laughs> see, and this, this is why Be Reasonable is my favorite skepticism show. I mean, yes, we make dick jokes, and Cogdis is funny, and Skeptics with a K is interesting, but you're never going to have a straight-faced adult tell you that moonlight is cold <laughs> on any podcast except <laughs> fucking Be Reasonable. Get on it, people. Leo the Lion is just waiting for you. <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah, so his argument here is, look, if the Truman Show is real, my thing could be real. I'm like, I yeah. don't accept the premise, but I still win the argument. There's a, a lovely thing he does as well, where he, he shows you a picture of the ball of Earth and says you can't see or touch the world like this. It's like, what, as a ball? from from You can't touch it from the outside? No, because you, you'd be far too far away from it, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I can touch it from close up, though. Yeah. Um, and then he says, uh, he says at that point, he says, but what if I take the image away? And he takes the world away as if to say, like, the image isn't there anymore, so you can't play. It's like, you are playing peekaboo with the world now. I was joking previously, <laughs> and you are literally playing peekaboo. And then he goes, I, now, I don't, I don't want to attack my fellow co-host, but he, he goes full Noah about the map for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I, I wrote in my notes, see Noah, you and Mark Sargent fixing calendars and maps together. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives a bunch of examples of optical illusions here too. Yeah. yeah. And 
none of them work. Did he, did he do all of them wrong? I didn't understand any of it. I was like, there's answers to each of these. Like he shows the ballerina spinning and he's like, is this on her left foot or her right foot? And I was like, left foot. It's on the left foot. It's very clearly on the left foot. You can't trick me and out then, of knowing so, what left means. No, okay. Understand. The thing is, is he's misexplaining that. It's not about what foot she's, it's about which way she spins, right? It's, yeah, it's, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would make more sense. He's okay. just misexplaining the fight. <laughs> and then, by the way, that's his first one. And his second one is, why don't light sources cast shadows? That he yeah. presents <laughs> as an optical illusion. Right? Much like a shadow that's not there from a light source. <laughs> uh, all spheres are actually plates with the dome <laughs> controlled by God. are the days of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he starts going like, you know, he's basically he's going like, but what if my blue is really your red? I'm just like fucking past the yeah. joint, dude. Just <laughs> shut up. Yeah, and the dress is the blue. Dress. That's how are we even talking about this still? You're you're wrong if you have the color wrong. It was blue. It was, <laughs> it was he, says this, he says it's it's if everyone says the dress is black and blue, but you see gold and white, are you wrong just because you're in the minority? No, you're wrong because the dress you're isn't wrong. gold and white. You're wrong because yes. it's black and fucking blue. Thank you. It literally has a color. It's also, it's also clearly Laurel. The guy who said that confirmed it. It's not Yanny. It's Laurel. It's a blue dress. Why are we talking about this? Right. I, don't, I didn't right. understand. Yes, exactly. You can just be wrong. But in a way, that last example is a perfect summary of flat eartherism, right? It's like, what if uh, most everyone is right about a thing, but because of a cognitive problem, you disagree? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm still wrong? Sorry. I thought that maybe my experience overruled the truth. It doesn't. All right. You're going to want to delete these 12 videos. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How about, so look at a ball. All right. Now look away and look at a piece of paper. Okay. Now look at the ball again. Do you see God sitting on a dome? Yes. <laughs> yeah. like, what? No. And okay. So. Uh, now it's time for them to show us the gorilla video, the basketball passing gorilla video, yeah. but they couldn't get rights to the gorilla video. So they have a much shittier poor man's version of that video. Yeah. With a, with a black oh, bear, yeah. you've got to, you've got to watch the white basketballers. You missed the black bear. I mean, in fairness, I didn't see the black bear, but only because I don't see color. So that's the reason. Right. Why I didn't see <laughs> so, so God is a moonwalking bear. That's, that's, that's basically that's the message of this section. Like this is serious. This is science. The world was created by a moonwalking bear, and <laughs> atheists are staging a basketball game to distract oh, you. Oh, <laughs> God! Oh, oh, you know the world is created by people who want to hide a moonwalking bear from you. And how could you trust anyone who wants to hide a moonwalking bear from you, Heath? How can you trust anyone with that goal? <laughs> There's a couple of different ways you could go here. He goes, and speaking of optical illusions, here's the Mercator map. <laughs> yeah. But th th he brings the map up and he shows how like the Mercator map's wrong and you've got this other map which shows, you know, the the sizes of Africa and more accurate and stuff. It's like, yeah, but in your mind, neither of these maps is right. So why are you convincing us that the second of these maps is better? Well, yeah. you don't believe either of these maps. <laughs> Right. He says he uh, actually says the correct perspective is the Gall Peters map. And I'm like, no, that's just different distortions. More of them, in in fact, actually yeah. just different ones. But when they put up the Gall Peters map, I did stop uh, doing hate crimes for a while. <laughs> oh, that OK. <laughs> so that's good that to was, know. It was comforting. Well, is that because you were more comfortable with that map? You're more comfortable with, uh, you, you, or you, he says that you're more comfortable with the Mercator map, but I love the idea that this grand illusion is just a comfort thing. Like, what yeah. changes if we ditch the Mercator map and go for the Gold Peters one? What changes in his mind that makes us more uncomfortable? And if nothing, why didn't they just go for the Gold Peters one? It makes no difference either way. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, he, but he, he makes a big deal out of this. He's like, the authority doesn't think you can handle the Gold Peters map in schools, except in, like Boston, they could do it in Boston and probably another yeah. couple other cities yeah. pretty soon. But. And he uses a clip from the West Wing and I was fucking <laughs> furious. <laughs> oh, I was so mad. And by the way, it's from the episode where the chief of staff makes everybody in the White House staff deal with crazy idiots all day. And <laughs> the example of the crazy idiots, they're actually right in the episode. They're like the people who are like, the map makers for Gaul Peters instead of Mercator. And like, they're actually making a real point that like this, Hey, this map is slightly better. They're both spheres, but this one's better. It, he misses 
yeah. that point by so far, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like I wrote my nose. I'm like, you you know that the Gal Peters projection is also of a round earth, don't you? <laughs> watch the episode. God damn it. Don't don't watch it. Don't watch the West Wing. How dare you? Stay. <laughs> no West Wing for you, Mark Sargent. No West Wing for you. <laughs> All right, but now of course at this point he has to also convince us that humans have emotions. Mm-hmm. Right? He's like, but humans have emotions. Don't believe me? I'm like, fucking course I do. He says, think about movies. Why would you get emotional about a movie unless you forgot it was a movie and suddenly started thinking it was really happening? Yeah, yeah. What? Not, we, we get emotional watching films, not because we're empathetic, but just because we believe anything that we see. We suddenly <laughs> believe it's all real. We are just babies and he really has got your nose, is what Mark <laughs> <Hoff talks about. laughs> By the way, it's some, again, just one of the random little images that we get here during this explanation we see Werner von Braun's headstone. I don't know so why. So I do know this. I do know this, right? Oh, do you? Yeah, okay, yeah, good. This is, this is one of my favorite things. So um, when I spoke to Mark Sargent, I, I covered this in my talk. Um, when I spoke to him, he said one of the pieces of evidence that the world is actually under a dome is Werner von Braun's gravestone because it says, I think it's Psalms 19.1. He's on his, his gravestone. Obviously, Werner von Braun, bring the, the Nazi scientist, father of rocket science, who uh, smuggled out the US in Operation Paperclip. And his rocket technology was what the, was the, the groundwork that led the uh, America's kind of space program and eventually led to the moon landing. So he's the father of the moon landing, father of ra- uh, space exploration. Yet on his gravestone, Psalm 19, 1 or 1910 or whatever it is, uh, reads, um, the uh, heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So why would oh, Werner von Braun reference the firmament on his gravestone if this wasn't because a post-death confessional? He's admitting it was all fake. <laughs> because the firmament He's not doing was the, the sky. Heavens declaring the glory of God, and I was the guy who had the keys to the heavens, so very much I yes, allowed people to access right. the glory of God. Bit. That's not the bit that he no. means. It's the firmament bit, yeah. <laughs> The rocket side. Sorry. I just cut to the <laughs> basketball with a frisbee. Cut to the basketball with a frisbee. Count the basketball passes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the moon and the stars um, and the sun, they aren't real. Um, and Mark Sargent is saying that's the point of this video. Yeah. He then gets on to this point that uh, you, if you're in a moving car, you sometimes can't tell if uh, you're moving or if the cars near you are moving. Um, and he says, yep. if the motion is smooth enough, you, humans can't tell that. And he said, it works for cars, for trains, basically a, any planet. And you're like, yeah, any vehicle. He's like, could it work for a planet that's traveling like a thousand miles an hour? Could you be moving that smoothly that you don't feel it? Um, but while, while he's saying all that as well, when he says, if the motion, motion is smooth enough, little moment, he throws up an image for smooth motion. But it's the image of an album cover from a band called Smooth Motion. So it's just four guys <laughs> with the title Smooth Motion above their heads. <laughs> Sorry, that was confusing. Here's a bottle of x Slack. Do you understand now? Yeah. Like, how, how can you tell if your car is moving or the other ones are moving is what he's saying. But like, also, that means the spatial dimension of depth collapses when that happens <laughs> and you become like Mr. Game and Watch all of a sudden. Like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> but this is it's an insane point. It's a, it's a, a, so I thought when he was first making this point, he didn't really fully understand the significance. But he's using that point to, to, to say, he says at the end of the video, you know, if you can't feel we're moving, we only assume that we're moving. So how would we possibly know? And that is the single dumbest, most self-defeating argument I've heard. Because I've heard flat earthers point out, what, in fact, one of Eric DeBay's 200 proofs that the word earth is not a spinning ball is you can't feel the motion. And if you were really spinning right. at a thousand miles an hour, you would be able to feel it. Therefore, we're flat. So Mark is saying, well, we can't feel it. So you can't <laughs> assume it. It must just be made up. Insane. Well, right, because he's a shill, as we learned yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. last yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but then the, the video, which was titled Real Eyes, it it... it Closes on the clever linguistic trick. Real eyes, real lies, real lies. Doesn't doesn't really fit with anything he's saying, but it's kind of cool. Re- so he <laughs> Liazzi, damn it, stupid. Oh, fuck, 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 re- Rule of threes. God damn it. God damn it. Spacesuits aren't real. <laughs> so yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. And again, keeping in mind, as Mark said, this is. We're getting to the very last shit he's got to eat. We have two more videos. So he's, this is his, oh, oh, you know what? Another thing. This, right? At this point, we have <laughs> built to this. So we get to part 13, the mercifully short 
the lost nail. I want to say he got a good microphone before he did this one. <laughs> just, just in time. Just in time. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> The cookie turnover has been good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Part 13, we've got a budget. Let's do yeah. this. So, okay, so he does the that medieval proverb version of the butterfly effect, the uh, for want of a nail, uh, the horse lost its shoe for want of a shoe, the message wasn't delivered, whatever. The, but anyways, the butterfly effect thing, right? And coming out of that, because that's just an artistic flourish at the beginning, you see, he proudly proclaims himself a warrior against science. Yes. <laughs> I am a committing a war on science. Love me. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, but this is where he asked the big question. He says, like, a lot of people ask me, what would it take for me to renounce my flat earth belief? What evidence I would convince go to me? Space. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's his first thing. He's like, what, fly me to space personally? Okay, I'd probably that's too much. Too, too much. Okay. All right. Uh, and he actually mentions what about a camera attached to a rocket? Oh, we do that all the fucking time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but he wants Shit. a 4K camera. He's got a very specific resolution that, uh, that matters. And he thinks, <laughs> he thinks that will be the nail that ties it all together. Because not only does he not understand the shape of the world, he doesn't understand the function of nails. <laughs> nails don't right. tie things. That's, you just get a better metaphor here. That's why there were only 14 videos. Also doesn't really understand how how uh, 4K works or what that means. <laughs> like, flat stuff becomes a globe in regular <laughs> HD. You would need, like... I'd also need uh, monster brand audio cables to hear the roundness. <laughs> full fidelity. So, yeah, but he finally he settles on. He's like, but I but I, there is one thing that would prove it to me. I'll settle for the astronaut suit. I'm like, OK, take me there, Mark. Um, <laughs> I love that for like the first half of this video, he calls it the astronaut suit and then remembers that it's called a space suit. Space suit. Shit. Space suit, <laughs> right. And he switches <laughs> to space. Suit. No second <laughs> takes. Mark Sargent. <laughs> He also calls the spacesuit objectively, probably the most impressive engineering feat ever. <laughs> and look, I exact love words. this video. <laughs> this video appeals to exactly my kind of stupid. Because you know what? I have zero answers for any of the questions he asked in this video, and I couldn't be bothered to Google. He gets me. He's just like, how do spacesuits work? And I'm like, they don't. Flat Earth, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> there is a lovely moment. There's an absolutely lovely moment when he's talking about how complex and wonderful a spacesuit has to be. And he says it's got this, it's got that. He said it's got uh, oxygen. But when he says it's got oxygen, he flashes up no. the sign for O2. Yes. That's the logo yes. for O2, the telephone company, the cell phone company. The cell phone. Phone. <laughs> but, yeah. He starts playing air supply on the audio. No, all right. No, we got yeah. it. That's, you're not doing it's, it right It's the though. equivalent of him saying, like, we just need to look over the horizon, and he shows the Verizon logo instead. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> But the basic idea is he's like, why won't NASA send me a fucking astronaut suit? <laughs> like, yes. and, and why did they block me on Twitter? That's they're, they're, And why did they tell me, please put your clothes back on? You're in a public lobby. Why are they being weird? They're hiding stuff. Yeah, he goes like, how do they test these suits to make sure they'll work in vacuum chambers? They probably use vacuum chambers. But why can I only find multiple references and still photographs? No video. Only this one very short video of that. <laughs> right? Like, he keeps, like, un like he's, like, he's bidding himself down here or something. Yeah, the video thing is great because he's like, what, where are all the videos of astronauts in vacuum chambers? I don't know, Mark. Where are all the videos of you on a date? Do you have to assume you haven't been on a date? Because I've got a video of you on a date. <laughs> And again, he keeps answering his own challenges. Just yes. don't make a challenge if there's an answer, man. How come there's no... Okay, there is... But there's three? Three videos? That's dumb. Four. How, four, four, four is still dumb. <laughs> okay, how come there's no videos where there's a weasel also? Okay, I got this one. What do you mean he brought his pet weasel? This is fucking... This is hard. <laughs> It's not a vacuum if there's a camera in there. It's live. <laughs> if there's a suit in there, honestly, it wouldn't be. Yeah. So, but but based on his inability to find extended videos of multiple astronauts in vacuum chambers 
testing astronaut suits, he declares it a phantom technology that doesn't exist. Yeah, and, and I think this is a bit where he says it's a phantom technology out of the likes of Star Trek and Book Rogers. And again, it's a very minor moment, but when he says Star Trek and Book Rogers, you'd think, right, he's been doing image searches all the way through. You say Star Trek, you say Book Rogers. We all know what images he's going to throw up. He throws up Matt Damon in The Martian and then a picture of James <laughs> Bond. And I, come on, it was <laughs> 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 and th this is where he makes the argument that they they test him underwater also mm. right he's uh -huh. like talking about how a spacesuit like they you know they t they test him in a big pool and you know water is trying to get into the suit and it proves it's watertight but when you're up in space uh air is trying to get out it's not water trying to get in <laughs> so What's How do we the, know that the inside of the suit is airtight? But, but the air but, is also trying to get out when you're under. What, Mark, are you? Where are you going, Mark? You can't. You can too hear me. I know because otherwise you wouldn't be yelling that. Yeah. No. And so this is his challenge. All right. The challenge he has issued to NASA. He needs two spacesuits. What are those? Twelve million bucks a piece. You've got they're less than that if you get them used. Two spacesuits and a vacuum chamber, and he needs him and some scientists, because he's not going in alone, to go in and test an astronaut suit with him. And if it works in a vacuum chamber, he will stop believing that the Earth is flat. That's all it'll take. <laughs> yeah. What are they afraid and, of? And and I'll need a video of a loom creating that fabric that makes it airtight. <laughs> it'll need to be like five minutes of that in a like full 180-degree panning shot of a loom. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say... I think NASA should go for this. Mark Sarge. Marky Sarge, my guy. What's up? Hello, gentlemen. Uh, I'm here to test your so-called space suit. <laughs> so-called space suit. This guy. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Dude, I can't get enough of your viewers following my kids to school. He is, he is such a prankster, this guy. <laughs> Are you meeting my challenge or not? Oh, we are. Uh, so here's your space suit. Yeah, yo, yo, here it goes. Yeah, the the big day. Um, uh, it uh, it appears to be filled with shit. No, no, I, I believe you mean vacuum suppressant. This, yeah. yep, mm -hmm. this isn't shit. No, uh, no, it is not. That is sciencey stuff. Sci sciencey stuff here mm -hmm. to prove that spacesuits are real for you. So that's just part of the sciencey thing we're doing. Cuz yeah. cuz it looks and and smells like like human feces. So I just want to Look, wanna... Mark, mm. what do you, what do you think happened here, man? You think that three professional NASA scientists tired of the constant harassment and widespread ignorance spread by your collection of stock photos that you couldn't be bothered to buy stole a spacesuit, ate nothing but Taco <laughs> Bell for a month and what? then filled it with human feces just to mess with you? <laughs> what? Uh, because that's not what happened. Not at all. Uh, no, no, oh. no. Okay, then. <laughs> $100 pay up. Jesus. No, no, Get with, with me here. telling him. With me telling him. That's 200 God damn it. Yeah, okay. You guys win. You win. I cannot believe that worked. Do I go to space now? No, buddy. No, you don't. Did you, did you not hear any of the stuff we just said? <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. Exactly. You're missing an opportunity, nerds. You're missing a, what are you, you're taking a picture of a sky donut, getting that poor girl harassed? You could be making him swim in poop. <laughs> All right, okay, like I said, they're only 12 million bucks. Patreon.com slash godawful, guys. And by the way, and he puts this out at the end, he's like, I'd even sign release forms. <laughs> There's, there's a lovely bit at the end of it as well where he's saying, uh, you know, in it, if I'm right, NASA will refuse my test. And it's like, yeah, but like, I think, say, Theresa May is a robot brought back to life by the ghost of Margaret Thatcher. And if I'm right, uh, you know, she won't even acknowledge my challenge to go submerge herself in the Thames to prove me wrong. So if I'm right, she won't even acknowledge it. And then he actually says, he's like, and if I'm wrong... <laughs> Ba basketball, dancing bear, <laughs> dancing bear. Moon moonwalking bear, moonwalking bear. All right, so now at long last, 
We reach video number 14. This is what it's all been building towards, guys. <laughs> oh, God, but this Col- is the shittest <laughs> argument. In conclusion, getting dressed is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> is it? He starts off on a on a Shakespeare quote in case the magic references didn't piss Eli off enough. <laughs> Just got a picture of my wife. Ugly. What? Come on. <laughs> Now I gotta kill Mark and Sargent. Also, I'm sorry, it's the most banal of Shakespeare quotes. It might as well have been, has anybody seen my fluffy pantaloons? Shakespeare, <laughs> right? It was the clothes maketh the man. Yes, for most of us, getting dressed is just an act of not being naked. But for some people, it's about making them seem credible. I don't know, Mark. I feel like not running around naked helps me seem credible. <laughs> I, don't, I have never felt more seen as someone who wears Velcro sneakers and penguin pants pants for 99% of their life. I feel like I've just debunked this entire video by existing. I like when Eli wears just the shirt and the and the, the sneakers with no pants. Yeah, like yeah, he does like the Donald Duck. Don, Donald Duck set, yeah. Live shows, you mean, live shows. I've been told it's a <laughs> private party at the door to homeless shelters. I'm just saying, Mark, you're not. <laughs> All right, but okay, now just to give you a, one more great example of what an idiot we're dealing with here. He starts listing, you know, different uniforms, different professions that have uniforms that we feel certain ways about. He's like, you know, think about all of the different people that you have, see in uniforms, police officers, firefighters, school teachers. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What that does was Mark third think example? a school teacher outfit is? Sorry, uh, Native American construction worker. You're doing the village people again, man. Sorry, sorry. Uh, this pornographic school teacher? Yeah, yeah she not right. be more The rest of my porn. point? She Nailed it. Not be more clearly from porn, that teacher. <laughs> so, yeah, he goes, you know, think about it. When you see a cop uniform, you think protection. I'm like, man, are you white? <laughs> Holy nope. shit, how not white what you I think. are. <laughs> So then he goes on to say, he goes, and I'm, I'm sure we all loved this formulation of a sentence. He goes, but one uniform is unique. <laughs> <laughs> but th- there's a lovely thing. He says the lab coat, it's unique. And to illustrate that, he used a picture of what is quite clearly just a white coat and not a lab coat because it's got a belt. Yes. Not a lab coat. <laughs> yes. He has no idea the difference between a white blazer and a lamp coat. But it's, it's yeah, so just, clearly not unique because you picked one that you thought was the same but not. <laughs> yes. You went to Bonobos to get a... What? What are you doing? Mark yeah. Sargent wanted to rock my world and he did because this movie taught me that Mark Sargent literally does not know what a lab coat is. <laughs> no, he goes, he goes, think about it. The lab coat is pointless. It doesn't protect you from fire or bullets or nothing. <laughs> yeah, he, lab coats serve no purpose. Yes. They, yes. they, they do, though. They, they do. do. <laughs> they keep all the shit off of me. Owie, I just burned myself on acid. Ow. <laughs> if only I'd had my Did lab coat. yourself, buddy? He's like, <laughs> no. He's, you could get Mormon underwear. It'd be way better. Um, I need but, pockets. <laughs> but but the point is, though, is that he he says that people will think you're smarter if you wear a lab coat. And I'm like, why don't you go get a lab coat, bro? Because that would help. Them. Well, the thing yeah. is, he he says it like he's the first person to have ever... He did, like, this is a really profound revelation that he's come across. And he spends some time laying yeah. it out like he's the first person who ever thought of this. And I'm I'm certain he was wearing a lab coat when he thought of this, just to really boost his heart. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm Mark Sargent. This is my lab coat and graduation cap and Hogwarts robe and uh, astronaut suit combo all together. Glasses. (laughs) I want to see him now like giving a speech in an astronaut suit with a lab coat on. And by the way, if you're wondering what you should think when you see someone in a lab coat, you should think that person just touched pee, blood or poop. That's what it is. That's always... (laughs) 100% 100% of what that means. And also, by the way, uh, fuck Bill Nye. <laughs> we, are, we are now in the fuck Bill Nye portion of the program. That oh. was, he's like, you know, you people, you see him in lab coats and you think they're smart. Like, look at this asshole over here. <laughs> and he shows us Bill Nye. The rallying cry, the finale of the flat yes. earth is fuck 
Bill <laughs> Nye. <laughs> and this is this was confusing to me slightly because Bill Nye is not that well known here in the UK. He is in skeptic circles now because he's been around mm. skeptic circles for a little bit. But like, if you asked a person on the street who Bill Nye is, they would not have a clue who he is. So seeing this as like the <laughs> denim on, I I thought I was missing something. I thought there must be uh, like I've skipped in a, a video or there's a, I've accidentally switched into like a parody of Mark Sargent or something. Like, this can't be his fourteenth and final point. <laughs> Nope, it is. He goes, he's like, and Bill Nye earned a bachelor degree in electrical engineering, not a science, <laughs> then immediately ditched it to become an actor. And I'm like, well, no, now he's an actor with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. He didn't have to give it back <laughs> or anything. Also, by the way, he worked as an electrical engineer for Boeing for almost a decade before he started the science guy shtick. So you're also just wrong. But even if you weren't wrong, it would be meaningless. Also, and look, we come across this quite a bit in the movies we review. Mark Sargent, do you have any science credentials? Right. <laughs> right. He's like, you know, he's not a licensed educator or scientist of any kind. I'm like, yeah, Mr. Rogers lived in a totally different neighborhood than me, dude. <laughs> Sesame Street is a bullshit place. Give me a fucking great break. He's I'm also all the science people agree with Bill Nye <laughs> yes. about science. Stuff. Well, they, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But apparently it is impossible for Mark to imagine Bill Nye being successful if it wasn't for the lab coat. Dude, it was the bow tie. <laughs> it wasn't the lab. It was clearly it was the fucking bow tie, not the lab coat. I mean, I, I saw Kanye West in a lab coat. So the earth is round. <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> Great. So, uh, but yeah, but there's this great bit here where he's like trying to be like the, you know, John Everyman or, or, or whatever here. And he's like, you know, they like to try to tell us what to think. And for they, he shows up, uh, uh, shows a picture of a bunch of scientists and lab goes and he's like, uh, they don't, they think they think better than the rest of us. And for the rest of us, he shows a picture of Duck Dynasty. Yes. Yes, he <laughs> <Yep>. does. <laughs> That's his vision of his listener. And then he says, <laughs> they are above approach. We are below them, and he shows a picture of Kid Rock. He does. And, if and you're identifying <laughs> with Kid Rock, you've lost whatever war. <laughs> if unless you're Kid Rock, in which case you've also lost. Well, yeah, right, right. Yeah, but he says everyone who puts on a lab coat becomes more credible. And I'm like, okay, let's step into Mr. Wizard's laboratory, also not a scientist, and uh put on a lab coat and see what we find out. So he gets this buddy of his who's a flat earther to put on a lab well, coat. Well, just before the, the flat earther guy, just there's a lovely moment I absolutely loved. He said, people who put on a lab coat, they seem immediately smarter regardless of who they are. And he says, man, woman, black, white, umpa lumpa. Like, umpa lumpa. Because like, the umpa lumpas <laughs> were so hugely respected for their intellect in that film where they were all slaves. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah, yeah, he accidentally disproves it again. <laughs> you just... Playing tickle fight with an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> One of them walks out all stern in a lab coat. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> this is serious. So, yeah, but then he, he to, to bolster his point about how lab coats make you look credible, they throw a lab coat on one of his flat earther buddies. This guy is literally also wearing a stained baseball cap. <laughs> yep. Right. He, he hasn't shaved or brushed his hair since the Carter administration. The guy could not look less credible. Putting the lab coat on him made him look like he just escaped from an asylum. Yeah. Right. And that was his get out costume. <laughs> he lied about what size lab coat he needed. He was like, yeah, I'll be fine with a large. And they were like, really? are you sure? A lo uh, sorry, you said a word before a large, but I didn't quite hear. No, it was a, a large lab coat. You sure you won't look like you're a mouse? You won't look like a mouse that someone dressed up for an Instagram? OK, <laughs> OK. We're buying a large then. He goes, he goes, you know, they'll let any old buddy buy a. A lab coat, it's funny how that's uh, true. You can't pretend to be a fireman or a cop. I'm like, dude, you can pretend to be a fireman. My my wife makes I, me do that all the fucking time. <laughs> I was going to say, it might not be legal, but you can do it. Trust me. <laughs> I pull people over all the time. I'm just like, wee, wee. do you know how fast you were going? Me neither. That's it. Get out of here. <laughs> but his the flat earth coat, it, uh, the, the, the white coat, it's lovely because he says, you know, he, here he is wearing a coat and yet here he is at a flat earth meeting and all the flat earthers around him are listening to him. Even I was listening to him. Was it because of the court? No, Mark, it's because it was the flat earth convention. <laughs> he was surrounded by flat earthers. <laughs> he 
It's because it was his turn to talk. <laughs> it's because he promised to listen while you talk, dumbass. <laughs> And the, the other thing that I got about this as well, he's saying about the people in, it's, it, he's making the whole point that it's people in lab coats, people in white coats, those are the ones who are saying the world is flat. And we listen to them because they're wearing lab coats and therefore they have a respectability. But again, his arguments self-defeat all the way along. Earlier, he said the reason we believe the world is flat is because we're taught it at school. And he's already pointed out that teachers don't wear lab coats. They've got their own uniform of dressing like a porn star. So his <laughs> arguments are just collapsing in on themselves. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why the video ends here. Maybe this wasn't his grand point. Maybe he just realized he's like, I'm undoing it. I'm on way. I'm unweaving it as I go, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> all right, for the final scene, he's dressed in a sexy lab coat. All <laughs> <laughs> yes, but but his closing point here basically is no one ever proved the world was round. It's just that they told you that so many times you believed it. So let me tell you again that the earth is fuck. <laughs> and that's it. That was the big closing point. That's the movie. Yeah, fuck Bill Nye. I could not believe that the <laughs> final clue of his 14 clues is essentially the earth is flat because of white coats. Like this was the most <laughs> underwhelming <laughs> ending of anything I've seen since the bit at the end of Harry Potter where they're all fat and middle-aged. This is the most oh, yes. underwhelming thing since that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, fuck lab coats was his strong close. Hey, by the way, did you guys watch any of his uh, follow-up videos to this? I did oh not. God, no. No. There is a supplement video to all these called uh, How to Cure Morning Wood Flat Earth Men's Health Tip. <gasps> um, I'm not making that up. That's what? real. That's a video Whoa. he made. How the How to fuck cure are you just wood. telling us about that oh. now? <laughs> That's seriously a supplement video. And he's like, so you know how there's um, uh, urine splashed all over your bathroom right now? Because that's what happens to everybody that can't control their penis in direction. Um, well, I figured out a solution. Uh, drink water to lose the morning wood. And um, in conclusion, the earth is flat. <laughs> that's the video. It's seriously wow. there's like a six minute video about curing morning wood slash the earth is flat. It's amazing how much more complicated life is when you're not allowed to masturbate. Okay, <laughs> so a big question, I guess, after 14 videos plus the preface plus the intro, um, anybody convinced? Did he, did he get any converts here? I'm in! <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we shot down that plane on 9-11 over Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, he's convinced me to not come back on this show for soon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, yeah, he has a habit of that. All right. Well, then I guess this is going to be my last chance to thank you for coming on for a while, Mars. Thank you so much for suffering through this two weeks in a row with us. Can't thank you enough, but I'm going to still try. Thanks so much, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Try it. Oh, get did you, did you not back. see segment 15 through 22? <laughs> <laughs> there are more clues. <laughs> I'm not making them right now just to get Marsh on next week. <laughs> And, well, that's going to do it for our review of Flat Earth Clues. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to power our way into this again. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Unbreakable, live at American Atheists in Cincinnati. Oh, Jesus, is that already? Oh, okay, all right. Oh, and me and, me and Heath get to see this in theaters together. I'm so excited. I haven't watched one of these together in a while. Yeah, we're going to hang out with a weird mouse in Kentucky and watch <laughs> that terrible movie. All right, awesome. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 191 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today, and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Crowd, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song is written performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. This movie is actually the secret ending to Lost. The island is the bottom. Oh! Ooh. 2019 went on to be the year that we saw the first ever Umpa Lumpa winner of the Nobel Prize for Physics. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mark Sargent went on to find other reasons to beg people to let him borrow a suit he's allowed to pee in. <laughs> they still wouldn't let Eli be a cop, no matter if he wore an outfit and a lab coat. <laughs> Thought it would double. Yeah, no, make it better. Make it smarter. <laughs> <laughs> That was so hard to do with no shouting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I could have muted myself for you guys and just done it on the other end. But... I'm mad about that exit now, too. Now that you bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.